Hey Orchendor, did you hear the one about the guy who could never die? <sighs> That's what you always say. Hello everyone and welcome back to more Steven Play Skyrim. On the last episode, I ended in Solstheim. I was I said that uh, this episode is going to be a talking episode and it is. I also said that I was not going to be looking at comments and just recording it outright because I was trying to get away this weekend and I would have loved to have done that but I didn't get a chance to. I got too busy with other things. So, I have read your comments and I wanted to thank you guys for giving me a lot of great information. There was a lot of things that you told me, um, even more quests that we don't need to do. For example, the Blades quest is never ending. Uh, we don't actually need to kill Parthenax. Parthenax can live because when we kill him, we don't really do anything. We have to get three people to join the Blades and then you go on dragon hunting forever. That's boring. Um, I'm not going to be doing that. So Parthenax lives because we're not going to uh, to go through with that. The other thing, I had made a statement uh, that uh, all of the Companions quests were done because they were Radiant. That's not true. There are some Companions quests that aren't never-ending, and we are going to be getting around to those, particularly some quests invol involving Aella and um, the Totems of Hercene, and also Purifying Vilcus and Farkas. Otherwise, I think we're good. Oh! And one more thing. I had said that the Ancient Farmer quests were never-ending. That is partially true, but not really. The guy that gives you those quests also has a quest that is never-ending, where you go fetch books, but the Ancient Farmer uh, tomes aren't actually never-ending. You get those in, for in Forgotten Vale, you get four of them, and it goes away. We all set? Okay, let's talk to every single person here. Except you. You, you don't get spoken to at all. The mines open, people are buying drinks, and I'm making money again. Just like old times. How are things now that the mines are open again? Careful, How do you think? It's a blessing. I've got regular paying customers again. Thirsty workers at the end of the day, and more coin than I can count. Hmm. Uh, your inn has an unusual name. There's actually a funny story behind the name, friend. A few years ago, I was walking down by the docks, and I noticed a Dunmer staggering along with a bottle of Sujama in hand. He was one of my patrons, and liked to drink heavily, so I wasn't exactly surprised. Okay, it doesn't sound unusual. Ah, but you see, this particular Dunmer was as naked as the day he was born, and singing badly at the top of his lungs. As I'm watching this spectacle, a net floats over the bulwark towards him. The man looks straight up at Fenech, yells, Have a drink! and tosses the bottle. And it never hit the ground. Hmm. What did the Netch do? Well, the bottle broke on Vanetch, and it must have swallowed its contents because it started floating sort of tilted. Finally, it stopped and began to quiver. A few moments later, the foulest liquid to ever assail your nostrils spewed from its maw. That's disgusting. I've seen plenty of drunks in me day. And I'll tell you right now, that niche was sick. Now I get it. True story, friend. True story. Hmm. Have you heard... Uh, I'm always... I'm always leery to ask about the rumors, because sometimes it starts proper quests, sometimes it does not. And it starts really dumb quests, but it's the first time I've done it in Solstheim, so have you heard any rumors? Haven't heard anything lately, but check back with me. You never know. That makes me feel better. Let's talk to others. Walking around like that is why magic gets a bad name. Shame on you. Sorry. Uh, by the way, do you sell any special mining gear? Mining gear? No. However, I used to sell East Empire pendants until I ran out of them. Popular little item. Uh-huh. What's an East Empire Pendant, even though I know exactly what an East Empire Pendant is? It's an amulet that was made exclusively for the East Empire Company. They gave them to their workers as an incentive at one point. A kind of reward for extra effort. They're no longer being made, so they've become a collectible. I'd love to get my hands on a few of them. Where can you find them? They could be anywhere on the island. The mines might be a good place to start. If you find any while you're exploring Solstein, bring them here, and I'll pay you for them. Hmm. 
Uh, I actually, I've had a bunch. I don't know if I have them on me now. I might not, but in the past I've had a bunch of them. So how are things now that the mines are open again? Things are picking up for now. All I'm wondering is how long it'll take for House Redderin to begin ignoring us again if the mine runs out of ore for a second time. Hmm. Are sales that bad out here? Bad? What if I told you that you're the first person that's even considered looking at my wares today? I've half a mind to contact my friends at the East Empire Company and see if they need an extra hand in Windhelm. Hmm. You have friends at the East Empire Company? Oh, absolutely. In fact, I've corresponded with Vittoria Vici herself more than once. You know, the lady who runs the East Empire Company warehouse in Solitude. The biggest warehouse they have in Skyrim. Okay. Bah, you're just like the rest of the folks around here. <laughs> Mark my words, the East Empire Company will return to Raven Rock, and when they do, I'll be at the top of their list. Hmm, so what exactly do you sell here? The question you should be asking is, what don't I sell here? Because I have pretty much any supplies you might need. If it's not a weapon, potion, or armor, then it's likely that I have it. So where'd you get all these items? Jarland, over at the docks, brings me most of my supplies. And the rest comes from bartering with the people in town. Oh, Glover Mallory gets me a few things once in a while. He usually has the most amazing deals that I can't pass up. Hmm, but apparently no one else feels like that because no one's buying your stuff. What exactly is ash-grown food? The Dunmer have been growing food in the Ashlands for thousands of years. It was born out of the necessity to survive in the harsh climate of our homeland. And now, with the constant eruptions of the Red Mountain, it's more important than ever. Is magic involved? No. Only the Tilvani have the ability to weave living growth from the ash. This simply takes the right ingredients, the right tools, and a lot of patience. Where did you learn your alchemy skills? Remember, Wait, what? Why? What? What the? Oh, we're... Oh, we're having a fight, apparently. Okay. Frozen in time, apparently. And his weapon as well. Uh, okay. That was weird. Modin Veleth, Captain of the Redoran Guard, at your service. Is it difficult commanding the Redoran Guard? It can be. Even the most experienced warriors can fall prey to petty distractions. They usually didn't amount to much. But they make my job that much harder. Hmm. Petty distractions? Some of my own men have become quite accustomed to a spirit they called Ember Brand Wine. Despise the stuff myself. It's powerful and tremendously addicting. I've seen men fail to finish even a single flask. Okay. If I knew where they were stashing the bottles. I'd put an end to it myself. Uh, I could track that down for you. You would? Yeah. That would be helpful. I just don't have time to do it myself right now. Okay, any idea where I can begin? Uh, they're too smart to have left it in the bulwark. I'd search one of the abandoned houses on the outskirts of town. Okay. So how are things now that the mines are open again? I've had to muster some more men to protect the mine, but I don't really have a problem with that. Second Councillor Arano is concerned that once word reaches the Reavers that the mine has reopened, they might think about paying us a visit. I say let them try. My men are ready for them. Hmm. So what's the unusual armor you're wearing? Ah, this is bone mold armor. Quite impressive, wouldn't you say? It's fashioned from actual bone that's been reinforced with a resin-like material and then shaped to form the armor plating. It might appear brittle, but I'd wager it could stop the blow of a weapon better than iron or steel. Hmm. So, in your own words, who are the Redoran Guard? All of the soldiers in this town are Redoran Guard. Some of the best warriors that House Redoran has to offer. I've spent quite a few years honing their skills, and I can assure you they're not just your average city guard. Hmm. So why have such elite soldiers on this island? To protect Councillor Morvane, of course. He has quite a few friends on the council back in Morrowind and they wanted to ensure his safety while he was here. Other than that, I'm not at liberty to discuss it. I never did get a chance to ask you, where did you learn your alchemy skills? 
After we left Morrowind, we found ourselves in Skyrim. We wandered around a bit and ended up in Morthal, where we took up temporary residence with Lani, the town's alchemist. I was fascinated by her work, and over a period of a few years, she taught me quite a bit. Hmm. So why'd you leave Morthal? It wasn't long before we became homesick. We were the only Dunmer in Morthal. When word reached us that a settlement of Dunmer was forming on Solstein, we were thrilled. It's been difficult, but I'm not regretting it one bit. In fact, I'm glad we've been able to stay and help. Hmm. So, how has Ravenrock needed your help? As you can imagine, the eruption of the Red Mountain took an awful toll on Solstein. Hunting for game has been scarce, and the waters are apparently too tainted for fishing. According to Counselor Morvane, my husband's been Raven Rock's most important food source for decades. Hmm. You're selling quite a few exotic ingredients. Yes, I'm proud to say that I grow or harvest most of it myself. I only wish I had a better source for Netch Jelly. Those creatures are difficult to track down since it's so dangerous beyond the bulwark. Oh boy. I could... oh god. I could get some for you, I guess. That would be splendid. I'd be more than happy to give you something for the effort. You better. You got a good thing going here now that you've reopened the mines. Don't let it go to waste. So how are things now that the mines are open again? Since I tend to want to ask every single person who ever existed that question. I've always had a steady stream of work thanks to the Redoran Guard, so it hasn't affected me much. However, I've seen the smile on people's faces, and there's hope around here once again. Something we've been lacking for a long time. Don't pity me. And don't look at me like that. I know what I am. Wait, why, why should I pity you? Doesn't everyone pity the hopeless? Look at me. I'm no better than a beggar. I used to be a miner. A good one, too. I made more gold digging up ore in a month than some people earn in a lifetime. When the mine dried up, I was lost. I have no other trade. So I spend my time drinking my fortune away at the wretched niche. Or I used to, anyway. Uh, used to? What happened? That fetcher Geldis won't even allow me inside. Said I was bad for business. If I want to spend my last bag of coins getting drunk, that's my business. What does he care? Hmm. Well, I could talk to him for you. You could try. If you can get that stubborn mule to let me into the niche. I'll make sure you get what's coming to you. Hmm. <laughs> By the way, how are things now that the mines are open again? Couldn't be better. The sections that are being opened up have revealed some huge deposits of ebony. Old Crescius has a nose for exactly where to dig. If they'd only listened to him years ago, the town wouldn't have been in such dire straits. At this rate, I'll be able to put a roof over my head in just a few months. Excellent. Because of you, my life has meaning again. Thank you. No problem. How are things now the mines are open? Brazla's been nice enough to show me how to swing a pickaxe. She's an old hat when it comes to digging up ebony. I may not be an expert at it yet, but it's good to be back at work and have some coin in my pockets. Great. How about you? Farewell. Help yourself to as much oil as you like. You've earned it. You don't say a word. Are you here to pray, or perhaps pay your respects at our ancestral tomb? Uh, what are the ancestral tombs? They're where we inter our dead. They are sacred places, meant to honor their passing. Ah. Sadly, we've been unable to use the ancestral tomb beneath the temple as of late, and have resorted to other locations to scatter the remains. Uh, that sounds like a quest. Why can't you use the tomb? Those foul vermin, the abominations we call Ash Spawn, have risen from the ashes of our own ancestors. They are befouling the memories of our forefathers by defiling their remains. Hmm. Well, I'll take care of that. Thank you, Wanderer. That would be most kind. No problem. This key should open the door to the tomb. I got you, brah. So, how do the Dunmer bury their dead? The Dunmer race doesn't bury their dead. 
or leave them to rot inside a stone sarcophagus. When a Dunmer passes, his body is given to fire, so he might return to the ash from whence he came. The Dunmer don't believe that death is the end. We believe that it's the beginning. Okay. Oh, by the way, what are the uh, reclamations? The reclamations are the true tribunal. The Daedra that consecrate the Dunmer people. Azura, Methala, and Boethia. We call them the true tribunal because they have reclaimed their place in our hearts from the false tribunal that came before. The false tribunal? Sotha, Sil, Amalexia, and Vivek represent what was being who won the Dunmer people's hearts with their actions, but blinded them just the same. They were aberrations, false prophets. They used their status as heroes to shield the true tribunal from our minds. But now that they've been destroyed, the light can finally shine upon the House of Reclamations. Oh. You learn something every day. You may have everyone fooled, but I see what you're doing here. The Call of Gold sends you scurrying like a rat. What? Excuse me, but the temple is for followers of our faith alone. Outsiders aren't welcome here. Well, that wasn't very nice. Okay, so I have looked through everything, I think, in this town, and I believe I've talked to everybody? So we are going to move on. Also, that's that's my bro. We're friends. Uh, I think we are going to move on to some other parts of Solstheim. The only other two parts I think we need to see. We definitely need to see uh, Telmithrin, and then we also need to go to the Skull Village. Let's go to Telmithrin now. If you're going to be up here, stay out of my way. Same old Nellith. Is there any way I can help with your research? Hmm. I do have a new spell I'm working on. I hope to be able to conjure ash spawn. Okay. If I could get a sample of ash from an ash spawn, that would be quite useful. I've made this special tool that will extract... Well, you don't need to know the details. Just go harvest a sample. Of course, the creature will have to be dead first, but I trust that's something you can bring about. Yeah. Your friend is, uh dancing. So, uh, how's Drovus working out? The man makes a dreadful cup of Canis root tea. However, he seems to run the place well enough. Good enough? Oh. Were you fishing for a compliment, a sign of gratitude? Don't waste your time. Those things are for the weak and foolish. Foolish? I don't care what you have to sell. Uh, what does it mean to be a member of your house? For now, not much, but in a few decades, when I return to Vardenfell, you would be seen as Morrowind nobility. In the meantime, we would keep a bed and chest here for you. Cool. Uh, I don't need training, and I don't need to learn anything about Morrowind. Where is your buddy? Hey, pal. That spell looks dangerous. Keep your distance. So what went wrong with your Ash Guardian spell? No, it turns out that the spell requires a heart stone to cast properly. I didn't have one with me when I cast it. If you cast the spell without a heart stone, it attacks anything in sight. Hmm. So, uh, you know what? I don't need to know this information. All right, then. Keep your distance. So how are you getting along here? Neloth is a real taskmaster. I'm the tea. The frost damn tea. I don't think I'll ever learn to make it properly. Aw, cheer up, Drovis. You're doing great. Until next time. As a side note, I've ever I've never actually been in here. Oh, what are you doing that for? Doing what? Having a dead guy exist? Listen, he's he's not gonna urinate on your carpet or anything. I'm just looking around. Pretty interesting place you got here. <laughs> or Chendor agrees. Blah. Another wanderer. I suppose you'll be wanting potions, just like the others. You know, we have met before. Anyway, do you need any help? How about some vampire dust? Bring me some of that and I'll pay handsomely. Having finished Telmithrin, I move to what I believe is going to be the last place I look in Solstheim, and that is Skull Village, starting with this dude. I 
I've seen outsiders in our village before, but none were like you. Your mother tells me you want to leave the village. That's right. I want to go out into the world and earn great glory. I want to hunt the deadliest creatures and claim vast riches. Neat. I'm wary of living in this village. I want to do something with my life other than farm, fish, and hunt deer. I know it must be hard for an adventurer such as you to understand this, but we Skull live very boring lives. Okay. So, I do understand. In fact, I'm going to help you get started. The world is dangerous. You're not ready. You'd abandon your mother when she needs you most. Um, ooh. Hmm. That's... That's hard. Uh... Is he ready? I don't know. I don't know this kid. Nicholas. Spelled in an interesting fashion. You know what? If I persuade you, I will gain... <laughs> I will gain speech skills. So, yeah, dude, what the crap? Why would you abandon your mom? There is truth in your words. She has not been herself since my father's death. I can see that in my eagerness for adventure, I have forgotten my duties as a son and as a skull. Yeah. You have helped me to see wisdom, and I thank you for that, skull friend. Yeah. You have helped me to earn extra speech points. Thanks. If Nicholas leaves me now, I will be truly alone. Hey, no worries. He's agreed to stay. May the Allmaker bless you with many sons and daughters outside. Once again, you have shown that you're a true friend of the Skull. I wish that I could give you a reward that is equal to the joy in my heart, but I don't have much to offer one who has so much already. Perhaps these will prove useful to you. These herbs are unique to the island, and their light cannot be found elsewhere. Okay, um, thanks. Who do you trade with, by the way? Many hunters pass through our village, and sometimes the Dark Elves of Ravenrock visit us. They bring us things from their homeland that we can't find on the island, such as spices, fine cloth, and ores that we cannot mine here. It's true we Skull prefer a simpler life than some, but we do still enjoy a luxury from time to time. Like cars? Probably not cars. I am called Wolf Wildblood. I am first hunter of the Skull. Uh, what does a first hunter do? When we stalk large game, I lead our hunters in tracking the beast. It is also a way of saying that I am the most skilled hunter in the village. I doubt that an outsider could truly understand. But I hope my words have helped to answer your question. Oh. Uh, so what wisdom can you share about hunting? The first piece of wisdom I teach to any hunter of the Skull is to ask the simple question. Should I truly kill this beast? We take only what we need, and so we preserve the oneness with the land. Hmm. So what is oneness with the land? The Skull hunt not for sport, but to survive. We believe that all creatures have a right to live as they will. And when we take what we need from them, we thank the beast for its gifts. The less we disturb the land and the beasts within it, the more we respect the wishes of the Allmaker. Okay. What kind of games do you hunt? Deer, bear, and horker provide most of what we need for skins and meat. Sometimes, when the wolves grow too bold and threaten the village, we must hunt them to cull their numbers. Hmm. So how long have you been First Hunter? In days past. My brother Torkild and I would share the hunt, but that was long ago. What happened to your brother? I wish I could tell you. He had a wild gleam in his eye, more so than most. In my darkest times, I fear he fell in among the werebears of the glacier. What's a werebear? Twisted beasts, a curse of Hirsin. True bears are noble and great creatures of the wild. But the Daedra have no skill for creation, so they defile the Allmaker's workings. I've heard tell of men who, by curse or by heart's desire, become transformed into one of those vile things. Ooh. It is a pitiable fate, and one that I fear has fallen to my brother. Uh, that, okay, um, so he's talking about werewolves. 
Do you have any idea where he might have gone? He set off from here so long ago. It's hard to say. Could be in Hammerfell for all I know. If you happen to cross his path, be wary. He was a fierce warrior as a man. If he fell prey to his more bestial side, he could be deadly. Hmm. Why do you think your brother became a werebear? Maybe werebear is different than werewolf, whatever. He never felt the call of the Allmaker, as I do. As we all should. We seek to live in peace with the land. But he had an eye for dominance and strength. For unnatural strength. You need look no further than the beasts of this island, mangled by the Daedra. It's not a fate I would wish on anyone, and not what I wanted for my brother. Hmm. Interesting. Thank you for your time, Wolf Wildblood. We actually got a legit quest from that. May the Allmaker protect us from whatever dark power took control of the storm. What'd you do in Skyrim before you came back here? My mother used to say that I was born an angry child. It's true that my heart has always been restless, and fighting was the only way I could find peace. I was a soldier for a time, and then a mercenary, but I was never truly happy until I came here. Hmm. Have the dragons made life more difficult for the Skull? Well, the dragons are a constant danger, but so far they have taken little interest in our village. Thank the Allmaker for that. Have they forced us to change the way we live our lives? No, not at all. They are but one more hardship added to the many we already endure. Hmm. Tharstan hasn't stopped talking about the crypt you explored with him. What can I do to help the Skull? Bandits sometimes come at night to steal our food. They think that stealing from us is easier than hunting for themselves. It will be dangerous, but if you'll deal with these thieves, we would be most grateful. Yeah, I can do that. Then may the Allmaker give you the strength of a great bear and make your will as firm as stone. Uh... Okay. Um, by the way, how'd you become the leader of the village? I was chosen by the people of the village when our last leader, Skaf the Giant, departed the Cold World to join the Allmaker. I suppose I've always spoken my mind and tried to do what's best for the Skull. That's why the others call me Fanari Strongboys. And with that, it seems that I have talked to everyone in Solsheim, at least that I can tell, worth talking to to achieve any last-minute quest that I need from this area. With that, I think I can officially announce that all of the talking episodes are done. Now, if there's a quest that I end up not doing that you really want to see me do, there will be a time that I, I talk about in, uh, in an upcoming episode where you'll be able to say, Hey, you didn't do this. I'd like to see you do this. And we'll get around to it. But for the most part, I think I've activated pretty much all of them. From the beginning, this was never supposed to be 100% run. And because of a few things, it couldn't be. But this is going to be just about as close to a 99% run of Skyrim as you could do. But Solstheim is done, which means that really, whatever we have available to us in our quest log, in our journal, and then whatever I have written down on the sheet of paper in front of me is pretty much it. Now, to be fair, some of them are kind of long. There's actually a, quite a bit of Thieves Guild stuff that we need to do, and, uh, you know, maybe some of the Companions quests are going to take a little extra time, but it is wrapping up. Thank you so much for watching. Next episode, we will um, probably wrap up all of the miscellaneous stuff that we can at least easily do, in Solstheim, so that's out of the way. If we have any extra time, we'll take care of any proper quests that are in Solstheim and uh, get those done as well. We're going to try and get rid of every single quest that's already on our quest book, already in our journal, and then I'm going to start going through the stuff I have on the sheet of paper. It's finishing up. It really is. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time for more Stephen Play Skyrim.